Welcome to the Open Forum. Once again, we have the opportunity to look together into this most precious book, the Bible, uh, to discover truth. And as you ask your question about some verse that you have been looking at and wondering if there could be something more to know about it than you already know, please ask your question and we'll look at it and uh, perhaps we can learn more from that verse. Because, but we do know that whatever we learn has to be in harmony with everything else the Bible has uh, talked about. And that is quite a big, a big task to uh, make sure that that is the case. But shall we take our first call tonight, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to you. Christ was born in the year 7 B.C., correct? Yes, from, from everything we know in the Bible, it was 7 B.C. The world existed for 13,011 years old, correct? Existed, it has begun in the year uh, 11,013 B.C. Uh, and uh, so it was 13,000 years exactly in the uh, year 1988. So that would make Christ over 13,000 years old. Well, excuse me, Christ is from eternity past. He's eternally, uh, but in so far as the, from the day he was born in 7 B.C. until this year, this year is 2011, and, and we add 7 to that, that would be 2018, and subtract 1, because there's no year zero, and we get 2017. That's not the right calculation. Well, I'm sorry, but that uh, you you now you I, I you're asking the same question as a caller I did last night. Now, are you calling? Uh, did you call last evening? No, but well, here's my question. Now, excuse you, me. Did you call last evening? Now we had a. I, we, you called twice, and please don't call any more for one month. You are violating our rules. We have so many people trying to get through. Please, please, we're going to go on to our next caller. Please, welcome to Open Forum. Welcome Hello. to Open Forum. Brother Camping? Yes. Um, I, this is my first call. I've never called before. I want to say that I have great respect for you. You know more about the Bible, it seems to me, than anybody I've ever heard. Uh, I'm, I'm also past 80. I just don't seem to have the understanding of the scriptures that you do. And I respect you a lot. And I hope you will respect me as well and let me say what I have on my heart. Well, excuse me. This is not the purpose of the program. For uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, a lot of people would like to say nice things or bad things, and, but this is not the program to do it. The progr this program is specifically designed so that we might teach what the Bible is teaching. And so you must come with a verse that you're, or with a, a doctrine uh, and have a question to ask about it, and then I will try to help you uh, with an answer to it. But it is not just a place for to share some thoughts or some ideas. I'm sorry. Now, what is your question? Brother Camping, you say uh, in, in your uh, statements there, this is your program. Uh, this is not my program. This is excuse me, excuse me. This program has been designed in a certain way. Now, if you were uh, the host of this program, you could design it in some other way. But it happens to be that it is designed the way it is to teach the Bible. And, it, and every listener can have his own idea of what the program ought to be. And maybe they're good ideas. They might be real fine ideas. But that isn't the way this program has been designed. And so please, uh, if you don't have a question, we're going to go on to the next caller. And welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I've been studying the Bible as, uh, as it said, to compare Scripture with Scripture. I wanted to ask you if I'm on the right track on this. 
I can find nowhere in the Bible where Satan ever created anything. Um, he just seems to pervert the ordinances uh, or things ordained by God. Um, uh, even it seems like in the Garden of Eden, he told the first lie, as Jesus said, he was a liar and the father of it. Yes, by, now what is your question? Not that changed what? the whole question. Excuse me. What is your question? You have what you have said so far is correct. He has not created anything except confusion and a, and a mess of things. But he has been appointed by God uh, to have certain responsibilities in this world uh, that that they were given to him by God. But uh, but now, what is your question? My question, sir, was if if there was anything. It seems like. All the commandments and all sin are just perversions of what God has ordained. That was my question. Is there anything that Satan created or anything original in sin? It seems like it's just, uh, from what I can read in the Bible, just perversions of what God has ordained. Well, the, fa the Bible teaches that sin is a transgression of the law of God. We know that in the Garden of Eden, where there existed our first parents, Adam and Eve, they were created perfect. We know the angels were created uh, at about the same time. We don't know precisely when they were created. And then, for, and we don't know why or how it all happened, but we know that um, some of the angels headed up by by Satan, who was a created as a good angel, but they fell into sin, and at the same time, uh, they also caused mankind to fall into sin, and so sin entered the world, and mankind from that kind of time on uh, uh, lives uh, sinfully, uh, and that's why we desperately need a savior. And the fallen angels that fell at that time also continued to live in sin. And that's the way it's gone right up to the present day. And, uh, and at the end, of, when the world does finally come to an end in a few months, then S uh, Satan and all the fallen angels and all mankind that had not become saved will all be destroyed forevermore. Now, that's just saying it all in a nutshell. Thank you, Mr. Camping. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Campton? Yes. Is it possible that man can talk to Jesus today? That man can talk to Jesus? Oh, absolutely. Every time we pray, we are talking to eternal God. God is, and Christ is the eternal God. And uh, we can, we are encouraged to come boldly to the throne of grace. That is, we can come again and again and again and again. It is an enormous uh, uh, privilege that God has afforded to mankind. And God talks to us very personally as we read the Bible, because every word in the original languages of the Bible came from the lips of God. And so as you read the Bible... It is God speaking to you or to me. Now, the Bible was written for human beings. Sir? Sir? Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes. Uh, uh, good evening, Brother Kevin. Yes. Um, I, 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 I recently um, was given a Bible, uh, King James Version, and I, 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 I'm like uh, as the the way you explained it is uh, how I feel. I have a, like a thirst for knowledge. I keep reading. I, I barely get for work reading it. Um, um, but I've been skipping around through, through the Bible, and there was a part in Genesis that I was reading. Um, I, 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 you probably know the chapter. It's uh, the, in the part where Cain and Abel, towards the end, they speak of a third son that yes. uh, Adam had. I think his name was Seth or Sith. And um, the, the, it's a, it's a, it's a, I believe it's the second to last um, uh, ch uh, um, paragraph in the, the, uh, the, four, the fourth page of the Bible um, where they speak about um, yeah, the third son, Sith. And then uh, they say that he had a son. 
And then the sentence after that, that's what I wanted to ask. Um, I didn't understand it. Um, I, I, I just forgot my Bible. I thought I had it on me. Excuse me. Now, what is your question? It has to do with Seth, who was, we read about, let's, let's find a verse that talks about him. We can go to Genesis chapter 5. And there we read in Genesis chapter 5, we read that in, uh, uh, in verse 3, And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. This is after uh, Cain had killed Abel. They, they were the two first, the first earliest born sons of Adam, and uh, Cain had been driven out away from, uh, from the family of Adam and Eve. But now Seth was born, and the days of Adam after he'd begotten Seth were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters. And so he also begat more children after Seth, and this is the way the human race began. Um, uh, uh, yes, uh, Brother Campin, the, 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 it, it, I believe it's a chapter after that. They, 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 they speak of um, a, a son of Seth. And um, it's the, I think it's the third, the third, um, the second to last chapter. I mean, second to last verse of, of that chapter or the following chapter, where it says, um, uh, um, "Adam, Adam." Um, it says Adam met, met his wife again, and um, uh, um, had a son named Seth. And then it says Seth had a son named. Um, I think it started with an N. Uh, and then, 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 it's, then it's a sentence. The sentence is the, the question I had. I'm so upset that I, I forgot my Bible. I thought I had it on me. When well, I was ex calling. that's that's the problem. You know, when you call up on this program and you don't have the verses in, uh, to give, uh, then it makes it very difficult to have a dialogue because you, when we are speaking from our memory, uh, we sometimes uh, uh, say something that is part of one verse and it's also part of another verse and it gets very difficult. Would you uh, please, if you call in, please call in w preparing to give the verses that you want us to look at. Uh, but uh, uh, if you want to, as long as you're on, it, just ask me, just give me the question that you have in mind and I'll see if I can help you, but I don't know whether I can. What is your question? Brother Camper, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to call back another time when I have the verse. I apologize. I don't want to waste everybody's time. Thank you for calling. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Brother Camping. Yes. Does the uh, flood in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, related all to the flood in Daniel, Revelation? Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. There we read, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Is that identified with the flood of Noah's day in any way? The answer is no, no. It is talking about when Christ would come to... Uh, to demonstrate how he made payment for his sins, uh, he would be uh, the uh, and it is, you know, the three score and uh, two weeks uh, is giving us a timeline. We have to work through this. Uh, we can't just jump right into this verse, but in order to figure out what it's saying exactly, but it is part of a timeline leading up to 33 A.D. when Christ was crucified as a demonstration of how he suffered before the foundation of the world. And when it's using the idea of a flood and to the end of the war, desolations are determined, uh, that flood is also used as a figure of destruction that it would come. This time it's fo focusing on the fact that Christ would be killed. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. I don't think that first caller knows that you count backwards in B.C., like 54321, and then you count forwards in A.D., 
one, two, three, four, five. But it made me curious, why do you count backwards in B.C.? Uh, why do we count that way? Well, uh, that's just the way uh, the scientists who have, uh, or uh, uh, anybody who has uh, uh, tried to date things of, uh, uh, of early, of, or many years ago, uh, they their decision was made somewhere along the way that Christ was be when Christ came that would be the the dividing point. Uh, B.C. meant before Christ. A.D. meant uh, Anno Domino. That is, uh, Domino is speaking about him, the year of our Lord. It would be after Christ. They at the time they made that decision, uh, they had the date of Christ's birth incorrect and so they were six years off they they uh, he was actually born in 7 BC but you were I think you are put I put your finger on the problem that when we're going in the Old Testament we go from from uh, 1 BC and and add back to 11,013 BC those are the years of the Old Testament and then from 1 A.D., there's no year zero, from 1 A.D., uh, uh, as we come to our year, for example, 2011, it's 2010 years later. Yeah, I think he's adding the 11,000 plus the 2,000 2, to get the 13,000. Yeah. But anyway, thank you. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Camping. I have a question for you um, about the Bible I read. There's several different versions out there, and I'm, I'm just wondering what is your opinion on the best version of the Bible? There's the well, and <laughs> you know, you've asked a very interesting question, but uh, uh, in, during the last 60 years, there have been many new new uh, editions of the Bible uh, and uh, they uh, it, it makes a lot of money for the uh, people who are producing these Bibles the publishers because all kinds of people they think oh here's a new edition maybe there's something more to learn that wasn't in the older one the King James Bible has been around 400 years it is happens to be the best translation that is available but ever since that 400 years there have been uh, uh, many 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 new editions and particularly like I say in the last 60 years uh, they come out uh, again and again and they're all inferior to the King James Bible we didn't need a new edition at all what we have to do is start reading the Bible and, and comparing Scripture with Scripture and not try to find some easy answer because we got a new translation. confused because I, I have an Amplified Bible, but I was afraid to read most of it because I don't know if they're putting their own spin on it. Well, see, there again, an Amplified Bible, is it, it, it's interesting. Uh, there's... Uh, uh, I'm not, I don't remember exactly how different the Amplified, I know there is a Bible, for example, where they, uh, where they put in brackets uh, various uh, synonyms of whatever word is being translated to show that it could have been this or that or the other thing. Uh, and uh, it's interesting, but, but really, if you have a concordance like a Strong's or a Young's concordance and you have a King James Bible, you have a, a real uh, potential of learning a whole lot from the Bible. Okay, thank you for your advice. I will do that. Thank you. Thank, thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Brother Camping. Um, would you please go to Luke chapter 1, verse 3, and then I'll ask my question. All right, let's look at that. Luke chapter 1, verse 3. It seemed good to me also. Uh, and let's start with verse 1. 
Uh, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Now, what is your question? Yes, I'd like to focus on having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first. Well, now, now uh, how could... you, you put your finger on the important phrase. Everything is important in the Bible, but in this context, if we just if we just kind of read it, uh, uh, just kind of read it without really thinking about it, it sounds like Luke uh, was able to uh, uh, learn from this one and learn from that one what happened in this situation and that situation, and he finally all put it all together as a, uh, and we have the book of Luke, but that it contradicts what the rest of the Bible says, because the Bible tells us that every word came from the lips of God, that he dictated it. And that is that, that, that we can know fits exactly this kind of language when he's saying, because I had perfect understanding in all things from the first. That is God speaking. This whole, uh, every word here in the original language in these four verses came from the mouth of God. But they were written in such a way, and God has done this again and again through the Bible, as a test so that people will look at this and they'll say, well, this was not really written by God. This was written by Luke, uh, who summarized or or wrote down as best he could what he knew to be true, and he happened to be someone who had extra good understanding. And... uh, but uh, but when he but the moment we see these this phrase here, uh, I having had perfect understanding of all things from the first, only God has perfect understanding, and it is the it is the uh, the warning, it is the uh, uh, the uh, red flag that is saying now watch out watch out what you're reading here. But it, 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 if, as we compare this with what God wrote in um, Jeremiah 36, for example, then we know it was because God was dictating it to Luke. Only God himself has perfect understanding, right, Mr. Camping? Only God himself has perfect understanding. You have it right. Only God. It had to be from the mouth of God. Well, thank you very much, Brother Camping. Thank you for calling our attention to that very interesting passage. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Mr. Camping. Thank yes. you for taking my call. Yes. Um, I just had a question, and then I was, was going to ask it and then hang up. Um, now, we know that in the Bible, we know that God chastises those who he loves and those who are his, and we know why. But can you give us an example of how he does that so that I may see in my life where he's doing that? Well, can I give you an example? Uh, in my own life, for example, God chastised me uh, three years ago uh, because uh, he knew my potential to be proud, as every human being does. And even though I try to walk very humble, uh, God knew that as we approached the end, I would a lot of attention would be focused on me. And you know, it's very easy to think I'm kind of a great one. I'm kind of special. I and uh, and it can easy build up your pride. That was Solomon's problem, I'm sure, because he had so much attention. So many people, like the Queen of Sheba, were just uh, astounded at his wisdom and it. And it ended up with the fact that he wasn't even a child of God. He began to, he, it, as, as we read his actions of, in his old age, it looked like he thought he was 
invincible. He could do about anything that he wanted to do and it would be okay. And yet he was demonstrating in his old age that he wasn't even a child of God. So in my own case, for example, three years ago, I I went in for open heart surgery and and uh, it was a very, because I had a, a, a valve that had to be corrected and uh, and it was really sapping my strength, so I went into the operation very weak already, and and I was in the hospital for some days, and many a night I didn't know whether I'd live through the night. It was a very, very, very uh, difficult time, although a wonderful time from a spiritual standpoint. But nevertheless, it uh, it uh, it uh, it really made me stop and think. I, why is God, why do I have to go through this in my at this late stage in my life? And then five months later, I've, I had a fall, uh, which normally would never have uh, done what it did, but it, it crushed my, my uh, femur and my big bone just below the hip, uh, and so that I was again in the hospital five days, and again very very wondering am i going to be live through the night and it hit me very hard god is bringing me chastisement at this time in my life so that i would make sure that i would walk humbly because I, as we approach the end i could receive quite a lot of attention and uh, who am I? I'm a nothing. It's only it's God that has to have all the attention. It is God who is the authority. And uh, and uh, I can I can tell you I sensed this very strongly that this was a chastisement. And I had learned also previously uh, other times in my life and and also uh, well uh, that when God chastises, He. <laughs> it's a chastisement. It's not something easy. It is not. It can be a financial situation that he chastises by, or it can be a, a, a physical situation, as it was in my case, or it can be some other kind of a thing. But when you're chastised, uh, you and you're a child of God, you know why you are being chastised. I knew full well why God was chastising me, that uh, at any tendency to be proud or think I'm important was gone. Uh, I knew I had to just, uh, I'm just an ordinary individual and had the pleasure of serving a wonderful master. But now we have to pause. We're continuing with the Open Forum program, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. How you doing, Mr. Camping? Very well, thank you. Uh, okay, your previous caller's question was regarding Genesis 4, 25 and 26. Genesis 4, let's look and see what's what was going on there. Genesis 4, verse 25 and 26, we read there, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God, said she, hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of Jehovah. Yes, I think that is the verse that he was referring to. I wanted you to explain the end of that, where it said, Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Or why at that time they began to call upon the name of Jehovah? Um, I just offhand I can't answer that question. I don't I don't know. I I I've, I've never really researched that particular verse I, real carefully. I know that later on we know that they uh, that it was later on that God says they began to call upon the name of Jehovah as, as, as his name and in fact uh, uh, this, is, this is okay okay uh, they then began men to call upon the name of Jehovah the word Lord here is all four letters are capitalized so in the original uh, it was to be it was the word Jehovah or Yahweh and uh, they knew God. They knew they knew the name God. Apparently, 
before this, Adam and Eve knew the name God, and and uh, 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 but when Seth was born, or, or when Seth uh, gave birth to Enos later, at that time God began to reveal more information to them, so that they knew, became familiar with the name Jehovah, and Jehovah is the name that is found all through the Old Testament about found about 7,000 times, and it really focuses on God as the Savior, uh, like we read in Isaiah uh, chapter, I don't know, chapter 43, I think, where it says that I am Jehovah, and beside me there is no Savior. They really began to get a little more understanding, in other words, of God as the Savior, although the word Jehovah is used as in very many many different aspects of who God is. But okay, th- um, may I uh, offer a suggestion uh, for my on my behalf? I'm sorry. Yeah, that was from your previous caller. Uh, I'd like to make a suggestion. Yes. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, I think somebody uh, suggested that you would put like some kind of May twenty one sign in the background behind you, and you you were saying that it might interfere or get in your way why don't you do that as a graphic from your like graphic department to put it on the screen of your programming so you wouldn't even see it but your viewers would well it's a thought but uh, uh i i don't know we're, we're working on so many ideas i'll give that some thought but uh, uh we certainly talk about may 21 plenty and i don't know whether I, I I don't know whether that would be necessary or be a good idea. I'd have to thought, think about it and pray about it. But thank you for the thought. And shall we go to our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes. Oh, hi. How you doing? Very well. Um, thank I have, you. I, thanks. I just have a couple questions. If uh, if there is no rapture... Maybe. Yeah, one question, please, if the, if you don't mind. We, well, we would I, really I, like to limit that. To, uh, to one question per caller once a month because we have so many trying to get in. Now, yeah. okay. what is well, your I, question? Okay, if uh, there is a rapture and you don't get raptured, what will you do? Will you go on the air and say I wasn't raptured or what will you do? Excuse me, I don't even entertain that kind of a question. The Bible has given so many proofs and so many signs that May 21 of this year will be the date of the judge, beginning of the judgment day and also be the last day of salvation because all the true believers will receive their glorified spiritual body and be caught up to be with Christ in heaven. And so there's, uh, there's, uh, there isn't any question at all. It is going to happen. And... Uh, uh, therefore, I'd, if I would entertain a question like you're asking, it would in, it would imply that well, I don't quite trust the Bible on this. But uh, the Bible, uh, there's no other way to have it happen. God has t- told us in uh, many many different ways, by the proofs and by the signs, and by all the detail He has given. That it, and this is, and there's been thousands of true believers who have checked this out in the Bible. It's not just that I'm the only one that's gone through the Bible and checked this out. Uh, and many people have done this, and there's no doubt at all it is going to happen. And I would be in rebellion against God if I put it any other way. If I said, well, yes, maybe there might be a slight up possibility no there is none zero it is going to happen but you cannot go i mean you can skip over you but the if the, the, the whole business doesn't depend on me it depends on god he is the authority all the true believers are going to be raptured I believe I'm a true believer. I believe I will be raptured. But uh, that uh, uh, asking these kind of questions, now what's going to happen? I don't know. God doesn't talk about family radio in, in the Bible at all. 
God doesn't talk about family radio. He t- tells us what the wor- what's going to happen in the world. And this is what we're teaching. And we leave it right there. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Mr. Camping. Yes. Uh, I got a question. John 16, uh, 31 to 33. John 16, you want? John 16 and verse 31 to 33. John 16, verse 31, we read... Jesus, uh, well, let's see. Let's start with verse uh, uh, 28. I, I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things? And needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou comest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, it is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the wor- world. Now, what is your question? Is that pointing to May 21, 2011? Is that pointing to May 21st? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, how, let, let's see, I leave a, <laughs> by this we believe that thou, do ye now believe, yet I am not alone, um, I, 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 just offhand, I don't know if any of these phrases do point to May 21, we, we, we are reading here, now we are sure that thou knowest all things, that's because he is eternal God, and needeth not that any man ask him. Uh, and and the hour cometh, yea, you know, is that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. And that is because he was going to go to the cross to demonstrate how he made payment for our sins. And, uh, and remember, his most beloved the, or excuse me, the disciple that loved him so dearly, Peter, uh, even uh, denied him three times with an oath to, be, to demonstrate that Christ, when he made payment for our sins, went, did it all alone. He, he made the full payment. Uh, and these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Uh, it is, it, this particular passage does not appear at all to be addressing May 21. It's addressing the fact that he is going to the cross to demonstrate how he made payment for our sins. But oh, thank, okay. thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camping. Yes. Uh, would you please read Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5? Yeah, let's look at that. Second Corinthians... Chapter 13, verse 5, we read, Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be a reprobate. A reprobate means that you are rejected by God, like the unsaved who have never been chosen. They are reprobates. But uh, now what is your question? Well, sir, what does this verse mean for Christians? Well, this means that to examine ourselves, we examine ourselves in the light of the Bible, not in the light of what the church tells us. All the churches have a program where they're going to show you how you can be a child of God for sure. You follow what they tell you to do. In most churches, it would go something like this. You, you have to be baptized in water. 
you have to accept the Lord Jesus, uh, and and you have to uh, may, maybe make a profession of faith, and you have to come into the congregation and vow that you're going to be obedient to all what is taught in that church. And when you do all these things, then they will tell you without any question, you're safe and secure in Christ. Now, I can examine myself in the light of that kind of information, and I can say, oh, I know I'm a child of God. And that's the way most people in the churches do make their decision. They have done all the things very carefully, very faithfully to what the church teaches. But that isn't the that isn't the standard by which we measure ourselves. The standard by which we measure ourselves is the Bible. And when we read, for example, in First John chapter 2, where God says, where, where uh, God declares in First John chapter 2, and we, we read this again and again and again and again, where God says uh, and in verse 3, and hereby we do know that we know him. Okay, God's going to show us how we examine ourselves. Hereby we know how we know him. If we keep his commandments. What commandments? The whole Bible. The whole Bible is a law book. If we uh, have an intense desire to want to do the will of God, or to say it the other way, if we find that if we fall into a sin and it troubles us no end because we know we have violated our precious Savior, the Lord Jesus, we have violated our relationship with God, and we have violated our own personality because if we're a true child of God, we, are, we have been given a new soul at the moment that we were saved in which we will never sin. And so sin becomes very much an alien to us as compared with what it was before we are saved. And so this is the w direction in which we examine ourselves. But that is not the direction that is taught in the churches. In the churches, uh, if, 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 if you are wondering, am I really a child of God? The pastor or the elder or the deacon or, or whoever, will tell you, well, now, let's go through it. Have you accepted Christ? Have you been baptized in water? Have you a really, are you really trying to obey all the rules of this church, coming faithfully and so on, and being a tither and, and, and so on? Well, yes, that's so. Well, then you can know. You are safe and secure in Christ's arms. And that's why, that's why in, in churches, uh, mainly they say we are a, a, a congregation of born again believers. And, and it's all based on what the church is saying, not what the Bible is saying. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yeah, is it my turn? Hello? Yes. It's my turn. What is your question? Okay, the Bible talks about the woman with two mites, how she uh, gave all, all of her two mites and trusted God. I was just wondering, since uh, it's only a couple months until May the 21st, uh, do you trust God that much? Take most of your money out of the bank and give it and use it for good? Or do you just say that and you say one thing and do something oh, else? And it's not a crazy idea, like you said. She really did it. So why don't you do it? You're going to waste your money? Why don't well, Why don't I, I don't know where, what your direction is. I never tell anybody, I never tell anybody what to do with their money. That is a personal decision between them and God. All, all, uh, all uh, my idea is, or what we are, our goal is, that we simply indicate to people who listen, if, if you would like to, uh, reach out with the gospel and there are some ways where, where we can very, very efficiently by means of radio reach the most people possible for the least amount of money. If you send anything to Family Radio, we will be your manager and spend that as, 
as carefully as possible. <clears throat> we have nobody with big salaries. I'm a full-time volunteer. It's, it, we're, we, we're, we, that money is going to be used to, uh, to get as much mileage as possible to get the gospel out. And this is the way it's going to go right up until the end. And uh, I don't know uh, the widow with her two mites. That's God speaking, simply indicating that here is a who is a very, very, very poor woman. She gave her living, and that's an encouragement to all of us. That's the Bible giving the encouragement. I'm not, I, you don't hear me uh, 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 telling people to, uh, to uh, do this or do that, but the Bible says that it uh, gives us that illustration that we should be ready to, uh, to uh, commit our life to the Lord, or lay our life on the altar of service, and and each one has to do that in their own personal relationship with Christ. But nobody better be telling somebody else what they ought to give. I'm not. Are you going to hang up on me? Are you still there? Are you still there? Yes. Go ahead. I'm not talking about other people. I'm talking about you. Well, Are but you, the, you but the God? fact Are is, excuse me. Now, the the authority. This whole business of May 21 is not Harold Camping. I am simply a teacher. I am teaching from the Word of God, and I am not the authority. The Bible is the authority. And I, how I live, I live, uh, it happens to be, I live a very, very, very modest life. I, 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 I don't drive new cars, I, and so on and so on. And, uh, and I watch over the funds that do come in very carefully so that they're spent as wisely as possible and uh, and uh, uh, I, and but but the, the <laughs> i i can understand why that by, that question might be asked many evangelists or preachers are in it to make money they want to they drive big cars live live in fancy houses and so on i live in the, and my wife and I live in the same house we built, I built 56 years ago. And, uh, and we live very modest lives. And uh, whatever surplus we do have, it is given back to family. To, it's given to family radio. Not back to them because I never receive anything from family radio. And when people, and so on. I'm, but I'm not, I'm not the authority. This, this whole business of May 21 is not Harold Camping. It's not Harold Camping at all. It's not any human being. It is God who is speaking. He is the authority. Are you going to listen to God and listen to the Bible? All, all I am is a, is someone who is giving to you where to look in the Bible to begin to find the kind of truth that we're talking about. And then it's up to, it's between you and God, not between me and you. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Mr. Camping. Yes. I have a verse to read, but I just want to say after that last caller, it's so sad that people are so concerned and worried about what you're doing. They need to, to think about what they're doing and look in the mirror. And you do not have to justify yourself to anyone how you live or what you do with your money. Now, the verses that I have are t Luke 4, 20. 7, 24 through 28. Let's look at that. Luke chapter 4. Verse Luke 24 through 24. 28. 24. No, Luke chapter 4, verse 24. Luke chapter 4, verse 24. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you uh, of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three, three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, uh, 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 I think it's Elisha, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Uh, and many lepers were in Israel in the day of, of, of Elijah the prophet. Now, we're, now it's Elijah. And none of them was cleansed, saving 
No, excuse. Now we have Elisha, <laughs> the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, save Naaman the Assyrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Wrath. Uh, now, you see, in other words, uh, uh, God is the one who is, is gu- guiding all these things, and he is the one who takes care of his people. And, uh, and uh, the big task God has assigned to us is to get the gospel out. And now it's the, it is the warning of Judgment Day, with, which goes right along with bringing the gospel at this time because God is still saving. And, uh, and I, I agree with you that the people who are presumably bringing the gospel, evangelists and radio preachers and TV preachers and so on, there's an enormous amount of, of, uh, desire to make money on this. You send a gift to me and, and I'll tell you God is going to prosper you and so on. And so the evangelist gets more and more wealthy. And you never, never, never hear anything like that on family radio. We, we're not in this for money at all. At all. Uh, but, uh, we still have to have food on the table. We have to have a house to live in. And uh, and uh, uh, we have at least some kind of a jalopy, some kind of a car to drive. It doesn't have to be new by any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, uh, and what, uh, uh, this this is something very personal between uh, uh, any individual and God. That's the, our, that's That's personal business with God. But thank you for calling and sharing. Now, you know, that I, I agree that it sounds like I'm trying to avoid, like somehow maybe I got a scam going that really I'm getting a lot of money out of all this. I can tell you very honestly and I'm this, this that I have never received any money from family radio. Uh, none whatsoever. I, I, uh, we started Family Radio 50 years ago with a vow, and uh, we wrote it into the Constitution that none of the board of directors could ever derive any real personal gain. When I say real, like a station was sold and it would make bring a, a lot of cash into Family Radio, which would really help to expand our ministry. The board of directors could, nobody could get any. If I would die, my widow cannot get five cents from family radio. If I would die, uh, it's, that's the way we have set it up. And because we are, we are, it's, we are, we want this ministry totally dedicated to God's glory, not to make anybody rich at all. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Mr. Campy. Yes, yeah. Mr. Campy? Yes, go ahead with your call. Yes, you're having a, a terrible problem with your line. Someone have a trap on your line or something because it keeps shutting you in and out, in and out. They're controlling by a switch or something. So will you please check that, please? You keep going in and out on the line? Yes, indeed. Very, very much. Well, the radio. Okay, the radio. we'll we'll check into that. Someone, you you think somebody is monkeying with the the signal? Because I do electrical work myself, and someone is tapping in on me, having a control where you can't get through straight. Well, I, I'm in on your line. We I can't detect it at all, uh, and uh, I don't know if there are other listeners can. It can of. There is, of course, the possibility that you have a problem in your radio set, but uh, we'll see if anyone else has the same kind of a uh, notice, the same kind of a problem. But thank you, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Brother Camping. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good, good evening. What is your question? Uh, I would like to... Uh, just briefly say that... I- I'm sorry, would you speak right into your phone so we can hear you? Yes, yes, sir. I'd just briefly like to say that many people are, um, as you surely understand, many people are at their wit's end, so to speak, with the reality of what the good Lord has offered you to deliver 
for us, as well as the entire network of yours. And uh, they need someone to lash out to or, or upon. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however we seem to look at it, it is you. But I just suggest many continued blessings to you. I am one who has grown up in the valley of the shadow of death. And I now listen to you 24-7, even while I sleep. And with that being said, sir, I would like to refer to Revelations 1, verse 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Behold... He cometh with clouds when every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. That is even so. So let it be. Now, what is your question? Brother Camping, sir, I apologize, but I do not have a question. Okay. I just want well, to... I have to say good night because... Oh, no, good night. I have to say... Uh, we have to pause for a message, and thank you for calling. We're continuing with the Open Forum, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, uh, Amos 4, 6, 7, and 8. Amos chapter 4, verses 6, 7, and 8. Let's turn to that. Amos chapter 4. 6, 7, and 8, we read, And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places, yet have ye not returned unto me, saith Jehovah. And also I have withholden the rain from you, when there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city one piece was rained upon and the uh, piece whereupon it rained not withered so two or three cities wandered into one city to drink water but they were not satisfied yet have ye not returned unto me saith jehovah i have smitten you with a blasting and mildew when your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive trees increased and so on and uh, the palmer worms or locusts devoured them, yet have ye not returned unto me, says Job. I have sent among you pestilence after the manner of Egypt, and so on. Now, what is your question? Well, this is the last three months of the harvest, but it's like the caravans going out and the tracks being passed out, and the people, they get the word. Some come from other cities and take it back to their city, but his arm still stretched out, but they're not returning to their God because it says Israel prepare to meet your God in 12 but yet they do not return to them him and his arm is still stretched out well I'm sorry this isn't talking about the, the, our caravan or this is not talking about caravan our caravan that's just a the caravan is just an answer to God's command that we are, we see the sword coming, we see judgment coming, and we're commanded to warn the world that judgment is coming. And it, it, it has nothing to do with our car, caravan. Our caravan is there simply to sound the warning, uh, along with billboards and along with people passing out tracks and along with all the other uh, shortwave radio and internet uh, information in every possible way. Uh, we're trying to tell the world that Judgment Day is coming. But that has nothing to do with this three months of, of, of that is spoken of here. came a warning now, it seems like to me. Instead of uh, looking for the lost sheep of Israel, I think that they're almost all ready for the harvest. Well, but there we are. The, the, the fact is, this is a time... When God is saving, there is a tremendous salvation program going on. We read about that in uh, Revelation chapter 7, that during the Great Tribulation, and when we look at a lot of other verses and tie them in, it is during the last 17 years, it's approximately 17 years, actually 6,100 days, that ends with May 21 of this year, that a great many people... 
uh, are being saved uh, as compared with what uh, the number that were being saved throughout the church age when when really relatively few people became saved. Yeah, this is great. Let us give glory to God and not to man. Have a good night. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, hi, Mr. Camping. Um, I was just curious, um, just about, like, tattoos. Does the Bible say anything about tattoos? Or is that kind of like another sign? It just seems like it's a fad that everybody has tattoos. Is that like another another warning, perhaps? Well, the Bible does talk in the in the Old Testament about cutting your skin uh, and and marking up your skin and so on. Although the context there was a in a, it was the kind of the setting of what was required in certain in certain uh, false religions, idol worship of one kind or another. Uh, although it's interesting that those who put t- tattoos are normally people who are pretty independent. They want to go their own way. They're not normally people who are walking very humbly before God as their Savior. But uh, uh, I, 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 I don't feel qualified to say how big a sin or if it is sin or whatever. Certainly if they put obscene things on their body, and certainly, uh, I would never recommend it to anybody. I would never want my children to do that. Uh, but uh, uh, it it is uh, because it, it generally those who are doing that are very independent and very uh, they want their way about life and uh, and they're willing to uh, to permanently disfigure themselves in order to accomplish that and. And uh, so it's 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 not that particular activity that labels them as an unsafe person. It is a fact that their whole attitude toward life uh, suggests that probably they're not a child of God at all. But thank, thank you, you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, hi, Mr. Camping. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Camping, I came across a verse a couple of days ago that I don't know if you've used it before or not to prove this point, but I'd like to offer it to you. I think it proves beyond any doubt that the Lord will not come as a thief to the believers. And not only that, it also says that the believer will know the hour. So can you please read Revelation 3.3? 3? Oh, yes, we use that all the time as a proof that uh, uh, the last half of Revelation 3, we read there, uh, If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. That is a very powerful verse that indicates that, that if we're watching, uh, Christ will not come as a thief. It's interesting, you know, when you read like Mark chapter 13, where God says in, in several times, no man can know the day or the hour. But when you get to the end of the chapter, God makes a very interesting statement. And what I say unto you, I say unto you, watch. And uh, that why, and I notice how that ties in with Revelation chapter 3. Why does he say watch? Because those who are watching, where do you watch? In the Bible. That's the only place where we're going to learn from God. And if you're watching, God is saying there uh, in his own timetable, you will know. And that timetable we learn from other verses is when we're right near the end uh, that God would open our spiritual eyes to all of this new information so that we would know that Christ is not coming as a thief, but he's given us the information so that, like we, we read, remember what you, we read in Amos chapter 3, verse 7? In Amos uh, chapter 3, verse 7, where God says, Surely... The Lord Jehovah will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophet. prophets. Hath the lion roared? Who will not fear? 
The Lord Jehovah has spoken. Who can but prophesy? And he's not only saying that he will reveal his secrets, but then he talk, begins to talk about the roaring of the lion, which is a figure of looking right at Judgment Day. And he goes on and uh, tells us that we are to publish in the palaces at Ashdod and in the palaces in the land of Egypt. These are all figures of the churches and the world. Uh, and say, assemble yourselves, and behold, the great tumults in the midst thereof, and so on, and goes on talking about uh, uh, figurative language relating to judgment. And and it's this is exactly what is being fulfilled in our day, that God has given the true believers the precise timetable with a lot of proofs that came right from the Bible, so that we and a lot of signs, so that we know absolutely it is going to happen. And the Lord has never brought judgment against anyone without ample warning, whether it was Nineveh, Sodom and Gomorrah, Noah. Uh, even uh, Moses used to go and tell Pharaoh, tomorrow the Lord's going to do this, this, and that to you if you don't yes, do this, this, yes. and that. And God had told Abraham when, uh, when he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, yeah. God God does reveal these things, and God, we read in the last verse of Hebrews chapter 12 that God, uh, or no, no, not, uh, there it is, says he's a consuming fire. But in another verse, we read that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he has written the Bible uh, so that as we study the Bible carefully, we can see what God did in certain situations throughout past history. God gives us a record of that. And so we can know that in the present day, if there's a similar situation, we can predict how God will react. And one of those things is just exactly what you have said, that God in the past has has given warning when these disasters occurred uh, to the true believers. And uh, now we have the granddaddy of all disasters, Judgment Day itself. And again, God is true to the fact that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today, to all the true believers, we know precisely the day and the month when and the year when Judgment Day will be here, May 21 of this year. Thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call? Please welcome to Open Forum. Uh, good, good evening, Brother Kemping. Can you please read um, Job 1, verse 6? Job 1, verse 6. Let's look at that. Job 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Jehovah, and Satan came also among them. Now what is your question? Who are the sons of God here? Well, the, we, how do we learn? We compare scripture with scripture. We go through the Bible. Who are called sons of God? Are angels called sons of God? Never, never. God insists that they are not a son of God at all in Hebrews chapter 1. Who are called sons of God? Remember in Romans 8, it says that when we become a child of God, we become adopted into the family of God. We become a son of God. A true believer is a son of God. What are they doing in heaven where Job is talking to God? There are those who, like Abel, or like uh, uh, any other true believers that had died in their soul existence, which was an integral uh, part of their personality. They had been given eternal life at the moment they became saved. So when they died physically, their body was put in the grave and returned to the dust. But in their soul existence... They went into heaven because they had been given eternal life. 
And so now God here is meeting with some of these individuals like Abel and others who may have become saved at, uh, before the time of Job and visiting with them. And they're spirit beings because their body is in the grave. But amongst them comes Satan, who is also a spirit being because he is a fallen angel. We're surprised that he's, he's in heaven. That's a big surprise to us. But the Bible really indicates this very clearly, that he was allowed access into heaven until the time of the cross when he was thrown out of heaven. So when in time, like in a timeline, how long ago Job lived on earth? Would you know that? When did Job live? We can't really tell exactly. Uh, it's uh, probably uh, about the time of Abraham or maybe a little earlier than Abraham. But we have to speculate. God does not give us. He was a true historical picture, a uh, figure, a person, he and his family. And, uh, and God raised him up. Uh, uh, to demonstrate, uh, uh, tell us a lot of things about the nature of the gospel and the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, but he, God did not give us a precise time at all when that we could know when he lived and died. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, Mr. Campion, in yeah. Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 66, there's a verse that says... Um, Isaiah one, 60. I think it's 66. One Sabbath, it goes something like one moon to the next moon, and one Sabbath to another Sabbath. A friend of mine says that means that Sabbath will be forever and ever, even in heaven. I, I was wondering if you could, uh, you know, expound on that a little bit. Yeah, well, you see, uh, let's look at that. Uh, verse 6, Isaiah 66... And what verse do you want us to look at? I'm not sure what verse it is, but it's in the context of 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 um, he's, he's talking about the new heaven and new earth. Let's go. It's verse 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Jehovah. That is all flesh who are in heaven. Uh, this is not talk this is happening after after uh, uh, judgment day comes and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me for their worms shall not die and so on in other words they uh, they are they the, the unsaved have been uh, been destroyed and uh, uh, and the true believers are with Christ and uh, and, uh, and but it's talking about one Sabbath to another. Now the Sabbath has to do with salvation. The seventh day Sabbath has everything to do with salvation. He gave it as a sign that I, the Lord, sanctify thee. And those in heaven are all those who have become saved, and they will rejoice throughout eternity future. Uh, it, it, with the fact that they have experienced salvation, and it's like it's just a continuing Sabbath forevermore. Uh, it's not a physical new moon, it's a new creation altogether. It's a figure of speech that is pointing to the fact that it is a salvation goes on forever. All right, that's very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Campy. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, my radio is coming in pretty good. Um, uh, can we go to Genesis 19? Genesis chapter 19, and which verse? I would like to compare uh, uh, verse 8. And Behold, now I have two daughters. Now this is Job. Oh, no, excuse me, this is Lot who is uh, trying to be a good host. God has come to visit with him in the person of two individuals and to warn him that he's about to judge, uh, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and the other two cities, Adma and Zeboam. And uh, the men outside of, uh, of the house are, are wanting to have homosexual activity with these distinguished visitors and 
Job is trying his best to placate them so they won't tear down his house to get him uh, and uh, uh, to get to them. And so he said to them in verse 8, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. They said, This one came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break down the door. Now, what is your question? Now, in uh, uh, verse 11, it kind of... Uh, and there they smote the, the God who is, who is represented here by the two distinguished visitors that came to tell Lot about the impending destruction of Sodom. They smote the man that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Now, what is your question? Okay, it, it seems to me that the verse 11 would be a sign of the end-time prophecy of, uh, of 2011, May 21st, because in verse 14, uh, it also says that they were married um, to those uh, two daughters, because in verse 14 it says they were their, his son-in-law's. So, uh, which were married to his daughters. So if they were married and they did not know men, um, that's a peculiar verse, um, which makes me question verse 11. Uh, well, the fact is that uh, uh, one thing that shines through all of this, uh, Job uh, uh, was doing something that we we can't understand why he would do it. He would offer his two daughters, and when in marriage, as we check this through the Bible, marriage did not mean that they already lived together as husband and wife, but it means that they were, uh, we would use the term engaged to be married, just like uh, 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 like uh, J Jesus, Mar Mary, and Joseph, when they came to Bethlehem, they were married, but they had not begun to live together yet until Jesus. Uh, the, until uh, uh, later, it was uh, it uh, the uh, the um, the uh, fact of engagement was equivalent to marriage, but it did not mean that they had begun to live together yet. So Job's daughters probably were had never, never engaged in sexual activity at all. But God allowed Lot to do this very, we, we would say it is, it's crazy that Lot would offer his daughters. But God has allowed Lot to do this. Now, Lot was a believer. We know that from other passages of the Bible. And the men that these two daughters were engaged to were not there. They, uh, God, uh, uh, later on, uh, they uh, they were also warned, but they thought that this was just nonsense. They were they perished right along with all the other people, the two men that they were engaged to be married to be. But by offering this, whether whether we can compliment Lot or fault him, that's not the issue. The fact is, these people outside did not want sexual activity. Lot effectively is, ask, ask, is offering that. They wanted homosexual activity. They wanted to be with these uh, two distinguished men. And that ties right back into Romans chapter 1, where God is telling us that one of the signs that would in indicate we're on the threshold of Judgment Day, is that there would be enormous, that God would deliver the world up to homosexual and lesbian activity and to a very high degree, just as we find it is happening in this world like, like we never, never would have thought it could have happened as, a, as it is accepted everywhere. And it was helping to tie... The fact that 
Uh, even as in Jude, verse 7, it says that the destruction of, the destruction of, uh, of, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was a picture or a portrait of the, of uh, Judgment Day. It would tie the fact that as one of the great signs that j- were on the threshold of Judgment Day is the same sign that God is speaking about in Romans 1, that he delivered the world up to homosexual and lesbian activity. And here in Genesis 19, God is indicating how intense the homosexual activity was was in view when they even refused the daughters. For They didn't want that. They wanted these men. They wanted homosexual activity. And that intensifies the... Uh, the uh, the character of the sign that God has given us in Romans chapter 1 of what is happening in the gay pride movement in the same sex movement as a sign that we're right on the threshold of Judgment Day. So so the the men weren't blinded by spiritual blindness so that they could not see Christ. Well, they they, they were blinded, first of all, for the protection of of the house so they wouldn't tear down the door but but they were also blinded uh, you know god sends a strong delusion remember second thessalonians chapter 2 for those who are not watching and are 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 preparing by crying out for god's mercy and uh, checking out to, to uh, check themselves to make sure that they are a child of god uh, so that they will uh, and the other is happening that they are blinded and and that's why today there is so much immorality going on in the churches and so much uh, uh, wrong things uh, broken marriages and divorce and and uh, remarriage after divorce and all these things because God has sent a strong delusion they are God has blinded them just like he has blinded these men so that uh, they are uh, more than ever pre- being prepared for the judgment that is going to fall on them that night. But thank you for calling and sharing, and do we have time for one more question? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome to Open Forum. Second Peter. Second Peter, yes. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, yes. Verse 10. Verse 10. Let's look at that. Second Peter, chapter 3. I'll have to hurry. Chapter 3. <laughs> Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 10. We read, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now, what is your question? And one more, uh, 13th, verse 13th. Uh, And verse 13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Oh, I'm sorry. We've come right to the end of our time. I have to say good night.